foresee a situation like that in five years in the future. And that's why he's writing the letter he's writing. So if you open your Bible to five years, we're going to read out there in just a moment. And what Paul is saying to five years is this isn't the specific, I'm dealing with the issue right now. This is what do you need to know? What do you need to have on your mind before we actually tackle this? Before what, what needs to be in your heart? What do you need to remember? So that's what this text is. And Paul says to Philemon in verses 4 through 7, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers. Because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing you share with the faith of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. I would love to hear somebody say something like that about me. That would be great. Paul knows that Philemon needs to hear this. He knows that Philemon needs this. He needs to have this in his mind. He thinks that that situation is coming up. Philemon needs Remembering how far God has taken Philemon. So that Philemon will take those next challenging steps with God. A big part of that is remembering. Remembering how far we have gone also with him so that we can take those next steps with him. So how does, how does Paul deal with that? How, how does Paul acknowledge that in Philemon? bring up what it is to be remembered. He specifically, in verses 4 and 5, is talking about thanking God. He thanks God. He thanks God specifically for the love Philemon has for all saints and the faith Philemon has in Jesus. Philemon has trust in God. And that is what is being recognized here. And that God has worked through that trust. And Paul is thanking God for what he's done with the trust of Philemon, for where he has taken Philemon. And that trust doesn't come, or that was that that time together, that thing that is remembered, does not come without relationship. It doesn't come without trust. It doesn't come without building a path with God. And that trust, I invited my friend Keith, uh, and he's, he's somebody who uh, has, has helped me along the years. Uh, he also works here on campus, he actually offers to see like Dr. Bob. He has his degree answer there. But I was talking to Keith some time back about a relationship I was dealing with, where somebody Showing through their actions that their words did not mean much. They were, they were just working in that way. And I said, I don't really know how to trust this guy. And he said, without trust, there is no relationship. And that makes a really good point. And it speaks to the way we work with God. And God is, God is trying, God is interested, and God is working to meet you where your trust is. And that's that's where he works. And it's where he's working. Found the trust, no matter how small, no matter how little that trust is, he seeks it out and he works with them. And he wants to go somewhere, so you're not going to stay here forever. That's not God's interest at all. But God is always interested in being where you're at so that you can go somewhere with him. Thing you share 
for the people that God is working in, and we partner with those people for the good of God, so that God can be known. And that's how our path is built. That is how that path that God has built us, and how God leads us in our lives. And personally, looking over over time. about Philemon is he gets called. Paul says, your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you brothers have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Paul's recognizing that in Philemon. Paul, Paul notices it. And you know what? Maybe we don't all have a Paul, but oftentimes we do. We have those people in our lives that have walked with us and as we've walked with the Lord. And we can ask them, what, what have you seen God do in my life in this time? What have you seen God do in my life over, over the past seven years? very common in, in, in both movies and, and books in, in the idea of story. When you have something like a gun sitting on the table, by the end of that story, it's going to get you. And the things that God puts in our life, kind of like with Frodo, when he, he gets that, that light, when all of the good lights go out, for that's what it's for. God is throwing those things into our lives. And there's plenty of other things that are on that. Plenty other things that we can pick up, like 